All right, all you trig lovers, we've got another review topic for tonight. And we're going to cram three things in here tonight. We're going to solve absolute value equations, absolute value inequalities, and then we're going to throw quadratic inequalities at the end. All right, so we're looking for perfect notes tonight. So I know this is going to take a second, but we're going to copy this table down. We're comparing equations versus inequalities. Okay, now they're very similar. Step one under the, under the equations, isolate the absolute value, which just means get it by itself. Write two equations, solve each, and check for extraneous roots. Now, the inequalities is going to go very similar. Isolate the absolute value, same as step one here. Here's the different part. We're going to treat um, the inequality like an equal sign. Let me just add that in here. Treat the inequality like an equal sign. Solve two equations, four, and he again, here's where it's different. The inequalities you have to put on a number line, and then five, state your answer. Okay, so there's the big difference. The inequalities have to go on the number line, and the, uh, the equations don't. So let's just review inequalities. That's going to be your less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. So anytime you see one of these tonight, the big deal is, is that you have to use a number line, okay, and then you have to state your answer. So we're looking for two things, number line and state your answer. So let's attack question one. All right, so if you look back at your notes, they're under equations, and I know it's an equation because it has this nice equal sign. Okay, step one is to isolate the absolute value. All right, so the first thing common sense hopefully tells you to do is add this 11 to both sides. So I've got x, absolute value of x plus 2 equals negative 2x plus 11. Okay, step two. So we're going to write two equations. Now hopefully you remember we stem them off. The first one we leave alone, x plus 2. Whoops, let me ignore that absolute value. x plus 2 equals negative 2x plus 11. Okay, and the second one, I'm going to leave that first part and I'm going to negate this whole side. Okay, everybody changes signs. So that's 2x minus 11. All right, now we just simply solve each of them. Piece of cake. Uh, I'm going to add my 2x, subtract my 2. Let's see, so I get 3x equals 9, x equals 3. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Uh, I'm going to subtract my 2x, so that's going to get me a negative x. Subtract my 2 equals negative 9, divide by my negative, x equals 9. All right, now you have to do the famous check. Check for extraneous roots. If they don't check, we're going to um, get rid of them. Now, the only thing you got to catch on your checks is that you have to check, let's write this down once, in the original. Okay, that's this bear that we began with. In the original is where we're going to check. All right, so I'm going to copy it down. x plus 2 equals negative 2x. Whoops, I better slow down. My original was way back here. I apologize. This bear is my original. Absolute value of x plus 2 minus 11 equals negative 2x. All right, and I'm plugging in a 3. Uh, so I'm going to get the absolute value of 5 minus 11 equals negative 6. 5 minus 11 is negative 6, which does equal negative 6. That checks. Same idea here. I got my x plus 2 minus 11 equals negative 2x. Let's plug in that 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 minus 11 is 0, and negative 18, that does not check, so that solution gets rejected, and my only solution would be 3. We'll just put it in a bracket. And there you have it, our first review of an absolute value equation. All right, let's try one more equation before we switch it up. Now, I tried to make this one pretty much as ugly as it's going to get. All right, remember, step one is to isolate this absolute value. You basically need to get this thing by itself. So what would you do first? Okay, hopefully you said it, and I think I heard you. You're going to add that 36 to the other side. Step one, add or subtract. So I've got three absolute value of 3x plus 4 equals 3x plus 36. Okay, now the absolute value is not alone yet. Okay, notice there's somebody in front of it. That's that 3. To get rid of that, I'm going to divide by 3 and divide everybody by 3. So I've got the absolute value of 3x plus 4 equals x plus 12. Now my absolute value is by itself, and here is where we stem our two equations. Okay, we're going to leave it alone, and then we're going to make one side negative. Okay, remember, negate the whole side, so negative x minus 12. 
All right, pause it, solve it, see what you get, and then let's check. All right, pause it, see what you get. So I solved mine. I've got x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. And then remember, I just need to check in the original. Um, so again, original was the very first one on your paper. So I'm going 3, absolute value of 3x plus 4 minus 36 equals 3x. And I'm going to substitute in an x equals 4 and see what happens. So it would get me 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12 plus 4 minus 36 equals 12. Let's check that. Uh, that's 16, the absolute value of 16 is 16. Times 3 would get me 48 minus 36. And that is true, 12 equals 12. And then I'll do the same thing, I'll check negative 4 in that equation, so I would get 3 times. Uh, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 4. Minus 36 equals negative 12. And let's see, negative 12 plus 4, that would get me negative, um, whoopsie, yeah, negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8, though, is positive 8, so I get 20, positive 24, because that turns into a positive then. Minus 36 is negative 12 equals negative 12. So in this case, they both check. I'm going to use solutions both 4 and negative 4. Okay, so make sure you check. That's our biggest problem on multiple choice. Make sure you check. All right, let's switch gears to the absolute value inequalities. All right, so if you look back at that table we made, it's very, very similar. However, you're going to see this inequality, which means we have to use the number line in the end, and we're going to state our answer. So the first thing I want to do is get that absolute value by itself, which in this case is very nice. It already is by itself. Okay, so I'm just going to pretend that's an equal sign and do the same thing. I'm going to make my two equations. 2x minus 1 equals x minus 11. And 2x minus 1 equals, negate that whole side, negative x plus 11. All right, we'll solve both equations. Let's see, I can subtract the x and add the 1. So I get x equals do, 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 negative 10. Same thing here, I'm going to add my x, so that's a 3x, add my 1, 3x equals 12, therefore x equals 4. Okay, now the only difference is, remember, the inequality here tells me to put these on a number line. Alright, now they have to go in order, smallest to largest. Alright, now let's go back and look at that sign to determine whether we have an open or closed circle. If the line is underneath, that means equal to, that means you fill the circle in. So I'm going to put two closed dots here, okay? And I'm going to test numbers. I'm going to test somebody on each side. Here I'm going to test negative 11. Between a negative and a positive, I like to test 0. And here I'm going to test 5. Now again, where do you plug these into? Just go back to the original. Okay, so I'm going to have to copy that original down in. The absolute value of 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal I already forgot here, x minus 11. All right, and I'm just going to show the work and plug it in. And you're going to shade, remember, where it's true. So I'm going to start with the 5. I like the positive numbers first. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 is 9. So the absolute value of 9 is greater than or equal to 5 minus 11. Is 9 greater than or equal to negative 6? I would definitely say 9 is greater than. That is a true statement, so I'm going to shade in this direction. Okay, let's test another one. Let's test 0. All right, if I plug 0 in, 0 times 2 is 0, minus 1 is the absolute value of negative 1, which is positive 1, uh, is greater than negative 11. And notice I would say that is also true. 1 is greater than or equal to 11. So that means I'm going to shade in this section. And let's test negative 11. Okay, so if I plug negative 11 in this equation, that's negative 22 minus 1 is negative 23, and the absolute value makes it positive 23. And negative 11 minus 11 is negative 22. Is 23 greater than or equal to negative 22? Absolutely, that is also true. Whoa, baby. So that means I'm going to shade here as well. So you'll notice we ended up shading everywhere on this one. We just don't assume that they're going to alternate. So in this case, I would say our answer, so now we have to, I want off to the side, state your solution. Our answer goes from negative to positive infinity. Okay, and you can't reach infinity, so those get parentheses. Or you could say all real numbers. 
Okay, so don't just assume once you know it goes this way, then it's going to flip-flop. That is not always true. Make sure you slow down and check these answers. All right, let's try another absolute value inequality. All right, so remember, we're going to treat it just like the equation, okay, except our final, you know, steps are going to be different. So isolate is first. Get that absolute value by itself. So I'm going to add over that 5. Hopefully you've done the same. I'm going to get less than 3x plus 5. Okay, just treat it like an equal sign. Solve it like you normally would. We'll split it into 2. x plus 3 equals, leave it alone. And then x plus 3 equals, we'll negate this side. So negative 3x minus 5. All right, here's the easy part. Solve the two simple equations. Uh, let's see, so minus x. So that's going to get me a 2x minus 5 equals negative 2. I get x equals negative 1. Hopefully you got the same there. Let's see, I'm going to add 3x. So that gets me 4x minus 3 minus 3 gets me a negative 8, and I get x equals negative 2. All right, I'm going to stick those two bad boys on the number line. Now, let's be careful here, guys. Who's smaller, negative 2 or negative 1? Think of it as owing money. If you owe a dollar or, or two dollars, you know, what's the most amount you owe? I would say negative 2 and then negative 1. Okay, now let's go look at our circle. Are we going open circle or closed circle? All right, based off this guy here, we better have open circles. There's no line underneath. Okay, so nice big open circles. And now we just have to test points. So I'm just going to bring that original back down. I have to test them in the original. Absolute value of x plus 3 minus 5 is less than 3x. All right, we'll just pick some numbers to plug in. Um, now, again, they get a little tricky when they're negative, so let's just think smart here. I'm going to go with a negative 3 here. Who's between negative 1 and negative 2? Maybe negative 1.5. And who's bigger than negative 1? How about positive 1? All right, so we're just going to carefully check these. I'm going to start with the positive. All right, if I plug in a 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4. Minus 5 is less than 3. 4 minus 5, negative 1 is less than 3. I would say that's a true sentence, so I'm going to shade this way. I'm going to test my negative 1.5. Okay, so I have negative 1.5 plus 3 is 1.5 minus 5. Is that less than 3 times one, negative 1.5, uh, which is negative 4.5? 1.5 minus 5 is negative 3.5. Is that less than negative 4.5? Now, negative sometimes trick people, but just picture a number line. If here's 0 and here's three, negative 3.5, negative 4.5 is actually smaller. So I would say that's a false statement, so I'm not going to shade in the middle. And then I'm going to test negative 3 as well. Negative 3 plus 3 gets me 0. Minus 5 is less than negative 9. Is negative 5 less than negative 9? I would say that's a false statement. So the only place I shaded is this direction here. Okay. So let's state our final solution here. I would say from negative 1 to infinity. Okay, notice the negative 1 gets a parenthesis because it's an open circle. Or I could say for all x values greater than negative 1 would be my other option. I kind of squeeze them in here, so let's just box those in on your paper so you know how to state these. All right, we're winding down. Quadratic inequalities is our last step for the night. And quadratic just means, let's make a note there, that you're going to have a squared term. Okay, so you're going to have to factor or use quadratic formula, but something should be squared. Now, how do these differ? All right, here are your, your five little steps. You want to make sure you set one side equal to zero. Okay, we'll treat it like an equal sign. We'll factor and solve. And because it's an inequality here, all right, we're going to have to put it on a number line and state the solution. So the big thing you got to get out of tonight, guys, is if it's an inequality, you have to have a number line. All right, I'm going to rewrite this. 8x squared plus 50x minus 5. And I'm going to bring this stuff over because I need one side equal to zero. So minus 10x plus 5 is less than 0. All right, so that was step 1. Get one side equal to 0. All right, now let's rewrite this equation. We have 8x squared plus 50 minus 10 gets me a plus 40x. And I think those 5s just cancel each other out. Is less than 0. Okay, now the question is what type of factoring are you going to use? 
Hopefully when you see two terms, all you're thinking is either perfect squares or GCF. And I think we definitely have GCF here. I can pull out an 8x, and I'm left with x plus 5. And again, just treat this like an equal sign. No big deal. Okay, we'll tee it up. Here I get x equals 0. Here I get x plus 5 equals 0, so x equals negative 5. Okay, now again, only because this was an inequality, we're sticking this on a number line. So I've got my negative 5, and I've got my 0. Uh, open or closed circle, uh, it was a less than, so it definitely gets the open circle. And again, we're just going to test numbers. I'm going to go with a 1 here, a negative 2 here, and maybe a negative 6 here. And lastly, you know, I feel like a, a broken record. We're going to make sure we plug them into the original. So I'm going to rewrite that for myself. 8x squared plus 50x minus 5 is less than... 10x minus 5. Alright, there's my original. Let's go ahead and plug a 1 in. If I let x equals 1, I'm going to get 8 plus 50 minus 5 is less than 10 minus 5. Uh, that's 5, well, 50 minus 5 is 45 plus 8. I would definitely say, is that less than 5? Definitely not. That's a false statement, so I'm not going to shade there. Uh, I'm going to use x equals negative 2 and test it out. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4 times 8. So again, we're just plugging it in this side and on this side. And let's see, I get negative 73 is less than negative 25. Is that true? Is negative 73 smaller than 25? I would say yes, that's true, so I'm going to shade there. And let's see, lastly, let's test x equals negative 6. And again, we're just carefully plugging them in. And I'm going to get negative 17 is less than negative 65, which I would say is definitely false. That number is much smaller than negative 17. So in this case, I have my solution. And again, make sure you state your answer. Now let me show you two different ways to do this. We can say negative 5 is less than x is less than 0. Notice if I shade in the middle, the x is in the middle. Or, let's make a note, I can say parenthesis negative 5 zero parenthesis. Okay, so we have set builder, if you want to make a note, set builder versus interval notation. Set builder versus interval. Alright, and lastly, I just want to practice writing the solutions on these two in two different ways. Again, with set builder and interval. And talk about the difference. Okay, because this first graph goes to the left or to the right, we have to use two different ways to write this. So I could describe this goes from negative infinity to negative 2. I think you would agree with that. Negative infinity to negative 2. Now look at this. At 2, I have a closed dot. So I actually need to make this a nice thick bracket. Or, because I could go the other way, and I think or makes sense, I could go this way or this way. Again, close bracket at 4 to positive infinity. And infinity always gets the parenthesis. Okay, now how else could you say that? You could say all the x values are less than or equal to negative 2, or all the x values are greater than or equal to 4. Alright, so let's get those both down and make sure we're clear on how we're going to write that. And lastly, if you only shade in one spot, then you only need one solution. Basically, the x has to fall between the two numbers. And because they're open circle, they just get both less than symbols. Okay, and as long as you put the smaller number first and the bigger number last, they're always less than symbols. Okay, now in interval notation, I could go parenthesis, negative 3 to 5, parenthesis. And there you have it. Well, that was a long review of all of our absolute value equations and inequalities. Have a great night.